here we are on a nice um, cold November morning uh, in my garden and in this video I'm just going to uh, demonstrate how I am going to uh, raise an already raised bed a bit higher to make it a bit deeper to make a to, and to make it into a, a, a sort of permaculture bed now in fact this isn't my garden it's the end of a neighbor's garden which I've put to good use uh, he wasn't using it and uh, he's allowed me to put a couple of raised beds and a couple of rows of uh, raspberries here you can see uh, the camera is now focused on uh, some containers where I grow some potatoes because I don't have an awful amount of room in in order to grow potatoes so I make good use of the space I do have and I grow them in uh, a, just a, a taste of them in in um, containers so just to give you a sense of where we're at we'll just pan round and there's the raised bed there that I'm going to um, make higher make deeper uh, in the foreground in the center of the picture there and then as we go around we see that uh, we have another raised bed next to it which I've already uh, done too, uh, 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 done the job of raising it into a permaculture bed and in there we've got some chard and some rocket which is still growing well and it looks very healthy too. I'm very pleased with the way these beds are going that's why I'm keen to uh, make them into uh, permaculture beds and then as we just go around we'll see there that we have a couple of rows of uh, raspberry canes um, which are about two years old now and uh, getting great uh, crops of raspberries okay let's uh, look at the um, first part of how we're going to carry out the deepening of this bed uh, you can see to the left of the bed I'm only going to sort of uh, focus on half the bed so that we can get more of a close-up of what's going on but you see on the left hand side there I began to raise the side up I'll put the other three sides on um, shortly uh, and in the middle there you can just make out the, uh, a heap of well composted chicken manure a very rich source of organic food and also will help uh, accelerate the breaking down of the, uh, the other um, components I'm going to put on to the um, or the other amendments I'm going to put on to the to raise the bed up well as you can see I've put the other two sides on now uh, the other three sides on sorry uh, to the bed and we've got about six to eight inches of depth that we can utilize we may not um, raise the bed up to its full extent in the first instance but over time we can build up uh, the fertility in the soil uh, through applying your one's home home made compost after making this initial uh, foundation. I'm not going to uh, dig over the um, the previous bed. Uh, I've never dug it. Uh, I literally just rake over it and plant into it and uh, apply compost and it's always been very very good in producing um, my vegetables. But the reason um, I want to make a permaculture bed is because I want to experiment with planting plants, uh, planting vegetables that are going to go to seed and create and then regrow again each other season and to leave the, the, uh, the vegetables to grow year after year in the same bed um, hence the name permaculture. This is the, uh, the well composted um, chicken manure beautiful beautiful smell to it not at all very rich very rich <laughs> delicious smell that's all I can say really uh, I just love the smell of it and uh, it, it's uh, it's been well composted down so um, it'll just all it's going to do is give off its rich nutrients to the uh, to the vegetables um, uh, that they're going to be planted into it so I'm just going to spread this thinly. It doesn't need to be a thick layer of this stuff because it's, uh, as I say, very rich and uh, you don't need an awful lot of it. So we just rake him over. You maybe see me pushing some of it outside of the camera's range only because I don't need it all. And I'm, as I say, I'm only concentrating on this end 
of uh, the bed um, so you can have a closer look of what uh, what I'm doing. Make sure it's getting into the corners. There we go. That's uh, that's all I'm really concerned about at this particular moment. Okay, here we have now um, the next layer that's going to go on the bed, and this is. Um, be termed the lucerne hay um, it's not ex exactly lucerne hay um, lucerne hay is alfalfa uh, I actually can't find it around my area anywhere but through my inquiries I found that uh, or my research I found that horse feed um, can say is oh, not being a horsey person I wouldn't have known this can I, contains alfalfa um, and so what I've done is I bought uh, a bag of horse feed that contains the the uh, alfalfa and um, this in this particular one it's a mixture of alfalfa and straw which is more than adequate more than adequate alfalfa is a, a very rich nutrient filled uh, um, grass if you like and uh, it's full of nitrogen uh, trace elements all the, that the veg need and when that breaks down, it will give um, tremendous body uh, to your soil uh, and a great soil structure too, uh, in terms of the humus that it will produce. So I'm going to spread this now in about a two or three inch thick layer. And um, then we'll go on to the next component. So let's carry on. Again, I'm just going to spread this around. Uh, might add a, have to add a bit more to it yet. Okay, so you can see now um, I've not done all of it. I'll carry on with that in a minute shortly, but just gives you a sense of what it's about. We put it in about a two or three inch layer like so, uh, and then we'll apply the next layer on top of that. So. I'll just carry on doing this. Okay, I've spread out the uh, the hay across the bed, as you can see there, and just on top of it, um, I've now sprinkled another very thin layer of the composted chicken manure. Um, this again helps um, to add nutrients to the soil, uh, but also acts as a tremendous activator to get the rotting down process going and um, supply food to the microscopic organisms within the bed that will do the breaking down. Okay, um, at this point too, now that I've got this uh, small sprinkling of, uh, of the chicken manure on top of the lucerne hay or the alfalfa, I'm now going to just uh, give it a quick water in. Um, if, I, if you remember, if I remember correctly, my old uh, chemistry classes, nothing, no reactions take place in the absence of water, but I expect somebody will want to be putting me right on that. Um, but that's what's going to happen in this bed. There's a lot of uh, chemical reactions going to be taking place as the, the microbes break down um, the the alfalfa and uh, incorporated into the soil the worms are going to do a great job as well taking it down into the bed and uh, we're going to have a superb uh, medium for growing vegetables in for many years to come Okay, now we've come to the final layer that I'm going to spread out onto this bed, and that's the composted manure, farmyard manure. Um, it's been well composted down. Um, I'm going to spread it over the bed, and that's going to give that lovely insulating layer over the top of the lucerne hay and the composted chicken manure 
it'll probably get uh, quite warm under there as it begins to uh, give off uh, uh, as it begins to break down and um, um, building it back into the uh, the nutrients that the uh, is going to be feeding the soil which in turn the plants will feed off remember when you're gardening you're always um, um, doing something for the future uh, and, and so you know, you know you've got to be a bit patient you've got to think ahead you've got to as I say on my website at uh, vegetablegardenguide.com experiment uh, there's no specific there's specific sciences involved with what goes on in these uh, in the beds and in gardening and in horticulture etc but you know it, it's not um, it, it, everything's open to experimentation to try it your way because my little micro um, environment here is different from the one that's in my other beds just over that fence and so you know experiment see what grows best see how you can develop them read gain knowledge and uh, you know you can you'll only get better so um, I'll just carry on now uh, after that bit of a, a, a preach <laughs> maybe you call it a rant but uh, it is an exciting time ahead to see what this bed will produce and how well it will produce. A bit pongy, but that don't bother me because that will all disappear. <laughs> Now, uh, what I'm going to do after this, I'll just continue to, to finish off the bed, um, and it will uh, be then come the early spring, be ready for me to, to start growing into it, yeah, growing vegetables in it. Um, one of the things I have problems with around here is that badgers get into the garden, and they certainly dug up that bed at one point uh, and uh, shifted the stuff around. Um, but with raised beds, again, it, they lend themselves to so easily be protected uh, which I will probably just put some pipes down in the corners get some sticks and put some chicken wire uh, uh, attach some chicken wire to the sticks and then I'll just create a little fence and I can just pull them out of the pipes as it were they won't, they'll just be placed in the pipes just pull them out when I need to get access to the beds and it'll be no problem at all it'll also hopefully keep the dreaded cats off as well uh, I love cats but not on my beds and um, They've got their own litter trays and um, you know I'm looking forward to to many years of um, very very healthy tasty nutrient filled vegetables so happy growing okay this is the uh, the bed I completed at the back end of this summer and then the one adjacent to it is the one that we've been looking at today and how to prepare it and you can see now that the bed is all prepared and it's all ready to be planted into and to uh, start producing. I hope you find that this video is uh, of some use to you as you uh, go about creating your own vegetable garden, or especially raised beds. Uh, as you can see that I grow in raised beds only apart from going into containers um, around my patio and around where well, I can fit a, have a space to fit a pot in, I'll put a pot in and I'll grow carrots and uh, some um, salad leaves and, uh, and uh, crops like that. But raised beds are so flexible. Um, you don't need to dig them. You don't need uh, uh, to worry um, ab uh, about managing them uh, in terms of uh, cats, rabbits, <laughs> like me for badgers, uh, they're easily um, uh, protected by a little barrier that's fitted around and can be taken out as I explained earlier in the video. Uh, and also they lend themselves to being covered um, with uh, a fleece uh, uh, in late into the winter if you've got some uh, winter overwintering crops or for netting or indeed for making a little um, a polytunnel uh, out of it uh, uh, and to, re to grow um, more uh, frost susceptible plants. So very flexible 
um, very enjoyable, very easy to maintain, and especially for, for those of us who uh, are maybe uh, have more challenges in terms of our health. I personally have a bad back and uh, it doesn't take uh, many five minutes before I, my back is aching tremendously and these raised beds just help me so much um, to overcome that. So uh, this has been a, a very amateurish attempt at a, a video to, to show you how I do my gardening and um, another very rough shoots video production. Thanks for watching.